Hey there. Uh, sorry, I have not been able to get back to the uh, numerical methods and the uh, nonlinear freefall problem, but I have just been totally, totally swamped at work for the last couple of weeks. Uh, some of our engineers have had uh, big projects coming up, uh, reviews for big projects, and I've had to kind of write some custom code, custom uh, math models for them um, recently. And with all the chaos in the market, uh, I've also not been really paying attention to the uh, YouTube stuff, so I've been looking at that. Um, but I wanted to get something out there, so I've been thinking about doing some more uh, financial content, and I just wanted to get, to get put together a quick video about uh, plotting up stock series with uh, Matplotlib and the uh, Matplotlib finance libraries. So this will be a, f a fairly straightforward video. There's nothing really complicated going on. We're just going to look at the uh, plotting library and how to do some simple things like uh, moving averages with um, with the library itself and uh, from internally from within pandas. So this should be uh, interesting. It's um, late on a Sunday evening and I've already had a glass of wine so let's see uh, how this goes. So let's do it. Okay so over to a notebook. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to need a NumPy but I'm going to import it anyways. As NP. We are definitely going to need pandas so import pandas as pd uh, matplotlib dot pyplot as plt. Uh, we're going to need uh, MPL finance, so import MPL finance as um, let's just do it as MPF and then we'll just do a matplotlib inline. Let's see if I did that right. So far so good. So I've already downloaded the data. Uh, I've opened it here in a text editor. Uh, this is the S&P 500 index downloaded from Yahoo Finance. Um, it's quite a long file. In fact, it goes back all the way to, huh, they must have back calculated the index back to 1927. Okay, I didn't know they had done that. Uh, previously, it had only gone back to 1990. Well, I'm just going to assume, take that at face value and uh, run with it. So uh, we have the uh, date, open, high, low, close, adjusted close. In the case of like stock splits and dividends, this is different from the close. Um, this is an index, so in principle, they should be the same. And then the traded volume, and again, because it's an index, the volume, um, as you can see here, is always zero. So let's import that with pandas. So I'm just going to call it SPX and I'm going to do pd.readcsv and the name of that file was spx.csv. Let's see if that uh, comes in properly. No, there's an issue. What is it? Oh, I forgot the equal sign. Kind of helps, doesn't it? Now what? PD is not defined. How can it be not defined? Oh, okay. How do I do that as MD? PD. There we go. So let's just make sure this came in okay. Print uh, spx.head. Okay, all well, that looks good. So I'm just going to uh, delete this line now and we'll go, go on. Okay, so because this uh, is so uh, extensive a uh, data set, I'm actually just going to take like the last uh, 30 or 40 points. So I'm just going to do spx is equal to spx.tail. Um, I don't know, for now I will do uh, 30 points. Okay. So we can plot this uh, via the pandas package just by doing spx.plot and our x values will be the date. So x is equal to date. Um, y values will be the adjusted close or just let, let's just use the close. So y is equal to close um, did I spell that right? Yes, I did. And what went wrong now? Uh, plot P L O T. So there's just a simple, simple line chart, but, uh, we could do something, uh, fancier and more typical in finance. We could do a candlestick chart, uh, using the, uh, matplotlib, the finance package. So let's just for now, let's just comment that out and let's, uh, plot it with the finance pa package. Now the finance package is a little uh, bit fussy about things. So if you were to actually look at, um, let's just uh, tail this, let's just print out this thing again here, print SPX. Um, <clears throat> 
this date column is actually uh, text and not uh, a date time object. So we need to transform those into date time objects. So let's do that down here. Um, so that should make it, oops, SPX. Mm, ba -ba -ba. SPX. There we go. And the uh, the finance package also assumes that the dates are the index of the table. So let's just make, um, let, let's just set those to be the index. So there we go. And now let's just uh, print out spx.head again. Oh, what is it this time? Oh, this should be spx. Okay, so there we go. So now we're in a uh, place to actually plot this. So let's just comment that out again and we'll come down here. Uh, MPF.plot and SPX. <sighs> oh, it's going to be one of those days, is it? MPF. So there we go. Uh, this is not a candlestick chart. It's the, um, uh, what do they call this? like a, a bar chart where the uh, these little tails here represent the opening and closing prices. Uh, I prefer the, the candlestick, so we can just go up here and make this a candlestick plot. And we could do that just by coming in here and adding type equals candle. Oh boy. Uh, let's just do type. There we go. And you can add things to this, uh, like moving averages. If you're like a technician who looks at like moving average crossovers, which I'm not, but we could just do MAV equals, let's do a 10 day moving average. There we go here. And you can do multiple moving aver averages just by providing a tuple. So let's just do like a, a um, five and a 10 day moving average. What I went wrong now. Oh, did you stand parentheses? There we go. So I'm not very familiar with this package. I don't really know how to customize this all, the, all that well, but I just wanted to do a, a quick little presentation on it here. Uh, it might be in, it might be uh, useful if you're into like technical analysis and just want to script up some um, some various studies. I'll put a link to the uh, description of the doc in, description and the documentation uh, in the video description below. But there are um, various technical studies you could put into here as well as moving averages. Um, I don't know if I personally would find this very useful. Like if I wanted to do this moving average, I would probably uh, just calculate it either directly or Pandas actually has a um, has a rolling function in uh, built into it that you could do something. Um, so let's let's actually just do that. Let's uh, calculate this. Um, what did I put down here? Uh, five and ten day moving averages uh, using Pandas. So let's come down here and we will use uh, we will create a column called SPX and we'll call it. Um, MA5 for five day moving average. And that is going to be equal to SPX. So we'll use the closing price. So SPX close. Um, and we will call the function rolling. And we'll give it a five day, um, five day window. And then we want to tell what we want to uh, calculate from within that window. So it could be summations, it could be all sorts of different things. So let's calculate the average, the, the mean. And let's just uh, copy all this, if I could actually click my mouse correctly, and repeat it, and we'll make this uh, moving average 10, and make this a 10 day uh, window, and let's run that to see if there are no errors, that looks good. So let's just print out uh, print spx.head. So here are our two columns. Uh, obviously, the first four days uh, for the five-day moving average are going to be uh, not a number, and likewise, there are going to be more on the ten-day moving average. So let's uh, print out the first ten rows uh, of that. So yeah, so the first nine here for this ten-day are going to be not a number, and then we get to our to our moving averages. So that's how you would calculate that um, using pandas. So that's about it. Uh, sorry, it's not uh, that involved the video. I wanted to do, to do other things here. You could see over on this like scratch uh, notebook here. I have a little more uh, more involved things involving probability distributions and histograms and such. Uh, but we can come back to that uh, another 
day because it's a bit off topic. Um, I've just been so swamped at work, I haven't been able to put together anything um, of any more complexity. So uh, until next time, I will just call it quits now and see ya.